Welcome to the Roundtable Member Interview Podcast Series. I am Kashika. Joining us tonight is a Knight Champion and Knight of the Roundtable, Notorious. With a Roundtable Perspective interview and open discussion on demons, astral projections, and aliens. Now, before we get started, please follow us and subscribe to us on YouTube, on BitChute, Podbean, and Twitch, where you can find well over 200 Roundtable podcasts. But most of all, join us on the Roundtable Discord server where, you, where, we, where we record our excellent podcasts. Now, with that being said, thank you to our live audience and welcome, Notorious. How are you, sir? Hello, Mr. Shaker. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. How, how's everybody doing, guys? Good. I'm good. I'm actually excited about this topic, right? Uh, very interesting. Demons and astral projection and aliens. Uh, Tell me about it. What's your experiences with that, with those? Yeah, a lot of a lot of times I've um, I've spoken on this topic, um, whether with whether it's off you know the podcasts or or in the podcasts. I've been I've been in this uh, server about about a year now, and um, I've been doing pretty well as far as as people who have watched my uh, last few podcasts on um, my sleep paralysis episodes and. Um, going through what I went through um, a few years back, six years ago when I lost my father and, you know, I experienced a demon in front of my bed and, uh, you know, how ironic that the very next day my father passes away after that very surreal moment I had to witness out of, as a 14 year old. Um, ever since then, I've been pretty much smooth sailing. Uh, I went through high school and, you know, everything was pretty much great. And uh, now I actually live in Minnesota which has been great also. I've been here for almost a year now. Um, in August, it'll be a year. And besides all that, it's, 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 just, it's just been a great ride when it comes to nature and, you know, getting my, my peace of mind that I've always seeked for, um, you know, living here on 21, 21 years of age on this earth. Um, it's been great. But um, I have been getting little episodes of of sleep paralysis you know I, i've been working a lot of shifts long hour shifts and um i won't say my job or whatever but i what i do is is pretty you know it takes a toll on the body and the mind and um as many as many scientists have said in the past sleep paralysis uh happens when the body is is tired but the mind has so much activity now for all the new agers in here and people who are or, or into the mysticisms, Ast the astral realm is, is very real. And for those of you who have lucid dreamed or have dreamed in general, and, and you guys are like, man, this dream that I just had felt super real, or sometimes you even recognize that you're in that dream, that right there, um, that right there is basically you in, in, in another dimension, which is the astral realm. So, yeah, it was about three days ago. I got back from home, took a shower. I was home alone. Um, I had my two, my two dogs with me, but um, they usually sleep in the room and I'm in the living room. And uh, I, was, I was laying down on my couch. I don't know why I did, but I decided to drink some wine, get high off some cannabis, and um, watch a scary movie. So I don't know if you guys have heard, but I've watched a, a movie called The Conjuring. It's it's like a it's like a movie. It's it's by uh, directed by James Wan, and uh, it's it's a, it's a very scary movie. It's it's about a demonic uh, entity that haunts this family in this house that they move into. And mind you, I, I've moved into this apartment uh, that I live in now. It's been six months now. So, yeah, six months since October, and um, nothing. Everything's been great. Uh, you know, usually I spend it with me and my fiance. And um, we usually kick back there, um, but she she was actually working an overnight, so I had I was I was home alone, you know, and I didn't have work the next day, so I was staying up late watching this movie. So there's a part where they're playing hide and clap, and um, if you guys have seen this movie, that very clip right there, and this movie's based on a true story too. That clip right there is when they were playing hide and seek, but they the mom is blindfolded and. The way to like say, um, like who's there? Who's there? You have to do a clap, and that's how they they go they go and try to find you. 
And well, when the mom does that, she's like hearing for the little girl's clap. And the girl claps, boom. And the mom's like, what? Hello. Okay, great. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, <laughs> I thought oh, I'm, so, I'm so sorry about that, guys. Yeah, uh, I had a phone call from a scam. Sorry about that. that That's okay. I'm so sorry. Yeah. So, so um, where conjuring... I left off, I, yeah, yeah, I know where I left off. So, um, they were playing the hide and clap or whatever, and the mom finds the little girl in the basement. As at least she thought it was a little girl, right? Her daughter. So it's a, it's like basically her in the basement and she's like in the dark and she's like, Oh my God, like what the fuck? She takes the blindfold off and um, she's like right at the stairway and, and the door behind her is closed. She's like, where, why did I hear the clap come from here? And all of a sudden she turns the match on to like get light. And this movie's recent. It's not an old movie at all. It's like, it's very, it's directed very good and it's very scary. And I'm there watching it two in the morning and, all of a sudden, uh, that demon does a clap. Boom, boom. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I get scared, dude. And, then the, and the, the girl in the movie starts screaming, right? And um, when that happens, my dogs start going crazy in the room. I'm like, whoa, 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 what the fuck? Like, what's going on? So I get up real quick off my couch, and I go to the room next door. And, and guys, I'm not lying to you, dude. Literally, when I went into that room, the fucking closet. My dogs were in the closet, dude. I don't know why, but my dogs were literally in the closet, locked in there, dude. And my heart is beating out of my ass. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck? Like, what's going on? Mind you, this is Friday night, this past week. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I, dude, I opened the fucking closet door, and they're in there crying. Like, I'm like, like, dude, they were just asleep on the bed. Why are they in the closet? You know, and I always have that closet closed. And, and I just, I couldn't believe they were in there with the door closed, right? And, and I, I fucking go back to the movie. And, the, and, the, and when I look at this, the TV screen, guys, I swear to God, my Xbox was off. Like the movie had turned off, dude. This is at two in the morning at night on a Friday. And I'm like, like dude, I'm, I'm, I'm froze. So like, I'm frozen in my boxers, literally in my apartment. And I, I just, I'm looking at the TV screen like, what the fuck? I turn the TV back, turn my Xbox back on. I call my girlfriend real quick. I'm like, hey, like something just really weird just happened. And I don't know what the fuck it is. She's at, she's at work. She works at a nursing home. She starts freaking out. She's like, are you serious? Like, why, why would they be in the closet? I said, Sam, I don't know. I, I really do not know. But um, she was just like, look, you pray. You know, you guys know I'm a Christian guy. I, I, I prayed. I prayed to God. I said, God, whatever, you know, just entered in my home or whatever. I, I, I made sure to, I have a gun in my apartment. You know, I have a shotgun. So. I went around and started looking around outside and stuff. Like, who, like, who the fuck was that, dude? It was just so odd. And um, I just said, you know what? I'm going to pray and go to bed. So I did that, and, and it was a great day. This was this past weekend, right? So, yes. Um, wait, no, today's, well, yeah, today's Monday. So my girlfriend worked another overnight on Sunday. And um, I got a phone call from her last night. And she tells me that uh, she's hearing knocking. She hears knocking on her on the door and I'm like, who is it? It's at her job. And she's like, I don't know, but it's someone standing there. I'm like, what? Like, like, the, like, go check the door. And she's like, Seth, it's 12 o'clock at night. Who's knocking right now? Like, it, I don't know, but it, that, was, that, was, that was the other thing that happened yesterday, guys. Um, it, uh, she, she only heard that once at around 12 o'clock at night, very dark. And where she works at, the nursing home was kind of like in a ranch area. So nobody really goes there. You know, it was just really weird. Um, I want to hear y'all's opinions on it. What do you think, Kashika? I think it's creepy. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah, and I, I swear, like this, this hasn't happened in so long. Um, I, I don't know why, but I, I don't know if it was the movie because some people say like when you watch uh, movies like that and they're based on true stories, they open like a portal to to like demons like you're letting demons come into your house and that's what really i thought about like friday night when i was going through that you know i just i felt like genuinely it was that movie that i was watching. 
like god turned it off for me i don't know but it was like why did that happen dude and like right after i prayed i fell asleep like prayer always makes me go to sleep i pray for about 30 minutes literally straight in my brain with my eyes closed and end up just falling asleep right after so well i um, did wonder about that with your your christian beliefs right like with the fact that you you're you're religious well how does how do you come to terms with all that you were saying that it could be demons that are being opened up because you're out watching this movie. How does your faith reconcile with what you've experienced? Oh, yeah. So like I said, this isn't my first rodeo. Um, I've had many experiences in the past, but it's been so long since I've experienced something so strong. I felt it. I felt like something genuinely did that. And, and me being a Christian, that, that definitely was something paranormal. And it's, as we all know, that's 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 the unclean spirit. You know, I I don't know how I allowed it in. Um, I've been trying to get closer to God, you know, and try to you know keep keep my motives clear and simple, and you know just be a simple man. You know, like that's all that's all I really am trying to do here, and I just don't know why I saw that. Um, it was it was it was awful, yeah. But I I do believe it was it was some demonic on a biblical scale. Was that the only, only time that you've ever experienced anything like that? And you and your girlfriend? My girlfriend has, has experienced stuff, stuff like that when she was younger. She would always talk to me about it. Um, but um, she said she hasn't experienced, experienced anything like that since she was like 12 years old. She's 19 now. So, you know, I spoke to her last, like I spoke to her today this morning on, on about it. And um, she'll even come, come in on here and tell you guys like something was actually you know, knocking on the door, and I'm like, what is that, dude? Like, you know, why, why is this weird shit happening all of a sudden, you know? I mean... Do you think it's the home that you're currently in? Um, I would have to look up more on who lived here in the past and stuff, because I don't really know, but it could be something that the people in the past, you know, left here in the house, which could be an unclean spirit they brought in, or, or somebody passed away back in, back in that... Um, you know, time frame, wh whoever last lived there. Or it could so, just be an old spirit, you know? Yeah. But, so when but you pray, does it help? It, it helps big time. Yeah, my dogs were really calm after because I, I make sure to, like, whenever I pray, I like to hold hands with whoever's around me. But I was holding my dog's paws while I was praying because, I mean, I just felt like they needed it too. Um, but, yeah, guys, that, that really did scare me. And, um even even as a christian man i was i was really startled by it and um that just shows that we are we are currently going through some spiritual things right now on the earth you know why would this happen all of a sudden you know i mean people say like oh like you know it could be just anything the dogs could have just locked themselves in there bullshit I'm like how how and then i come back in the xbox off nobody else was in the house with me it's it was ridiculous i went around and i checked everything nobody was outside nobody was inside you know, I mean, it's just, you got to look around sometimes and think, man, like, this is, this is some weird shit. I don't know if you guys have experienced anything like that, but, I mean, me experiencing that on my own at two in the morning at night, it's like, you know, I That's don't know, freaky. Man. It's very yeah. freaky. It's very yeah. hard to describe. It's very hard to put into words. Like, I'm trying my best here, but, I mean, I, 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 me, my, I, I have goosebumps all over my body you know, right now because... Yeah, that's not a normal thing, right? It's out of the normal. Now you were saying that, um, what, like, what, what is it that you believe that's happening right now? You were saying that there's a whole bunch of things that well, are happening right now. What do you mean by that? Well, um, I, I feel like we, we humans are at a spiritual war right now. I feel like we're in spiritual warfare. Um, as many of you guys know what's going on in the world uh, with, with the Palestine and uh, the Israels, you know, there's civil unrest in the world already i feel like i'm not going to get into it about the vaccine or COVID 19 but we all know what's happening here i think we're losing your signal there do you want to just i'm going to disconnect you i please. feel like the new world is being hello can you repeat that please you're breaking up a little bit there oh, i'm sorry about that yeah so i was i was saying that um i really do believe that what's happening is, is setting us up for the new world order. So we're going to see a lot of evil stuff happening in the very uh, near future, um, whether it's political, um, 
you know, or anything to do with, with what, what's happening with our governments right now, too. Like, I think, yeah, the, the New World Order is coming into place, and, and they're trying to get the Antichrist to, to, to become, you know, fulfill the, the, basically the revelation, you know? And, um, do, you, do you think that you watching that movie caused fear in you to be attracting a demon or something or, or a spirit or the entity or whatever that it was that you and your, your girlfriend experienced? Mind you, I was in the house alone when that happened. My girlfriend was um, at, at, a, at a nursing home on a late night shift. So I was by myself watching that movie. I had just got out of work. My dogs were asleep in the room, like I said. And um, the movie was kind of like sort of beginning. And when that part happened, I mean, I was literally just staring into the TV on wine. Like I said, I was drinking alcohol, I was drinking wine, and I was smoking cannabis. So when I heard the dogs bark after that, that little girl, you know, clapped in the movie in the basement, mm -hmm. that's exactly when it happened. Right when, that went, right when she clapped, she went like this. That's when I started going like off. Like they just started going rowdy, and I went straight to the room. I kind of like I st I actually sat on the couch, staring at the TV, like kind of drunk and high. And I, I I took a while for me to like take it all in. Like why are my dogs barking, dude? And I felt like they were literally trapped. And th that's what brought so much anxiety, to me, so much fear, is I had to snap out of the high and the, and the drunkenness that was that I was in, and I, I had to go rushing to to where they were, and they were literally in my my room closet, you know, and I, I open the door and they're in front and they run out and they're like running all over the place, like going scared. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it, I mean, it's like, guys, I promise you, I had just got out of the shower. My dogs went to the room. I turned the lights off for them. I mean, is that the only time you've ever experienced anything like that? Like, that's a big no. thing. Freddy is on its own, right? Yeah, I mean, I think most of you guys in here, oh, wait, we, ha we have a, a lot of new members now. I'm not sure, but I, I, you guys do remember my, my, my story that, um, about how my dad passed away back in 2014 and what I witnessed the night before my father's death. It, no, um, I don't know that one. I, I can talk about that. That's the very first thing that um, kind of started my, I don't know, I just started seeing so much stuff after that, um, and I started getting closer to God, you know. But yeah, um, like I was did saying, you, did you ever get any kind of indication that it may be your father trying to communicate with you? Because if it all started happening after your father's passing in 2014, you know, maybe he's trying to get your attention. <laughs> I mean, that very well could be. But um, at the same time, I feel like this is an evil entity. You know, my, my father died from, a, from an aneurysm heart attack. So. And, and I'm going to go ahead and, and just tell you guys how it happened. So basically, um, it was the year 2014 and uh, about six years, yeah, six years back. And um, I was in middle school at the time. I was in eighth grade and it was around October time. And uh, this was like, on the, I think it was like a day before Halloween. Me, me and my best friend, um, Isaac, Bloody Beast, as you guys know, he's, he's, he comes in here sometimes. He should be here in a bit, actually. But uh we actually played with the Ouija board that night because I was so tempted to, you know, play with it. I always thought like, you know, religion was bullshit. And I always thought like things was fake. Like I, I didn't believe in, God, you know, as a young kid, but um, I wanted to play the Ouija board so bad. Cause you know, where I was from in South Texas near, near the border of Mexico, they would say that if you played with it, you could contact the dead. And I was like, that, dude, that's bullshit. Like, you know, just try that out. So we chatted on Halloween. We did it at my cousin's house. She, she had the Ouija board. We went to the basement with it. And um, the only reason why I was there at my cousin's house is because my family was having a barbecue, by the way. And, uh, well, me and, my, me and my friend Isaac, we went upstairs and we started playing the Ouija board. And um, no, it wasn't working. It wasn't working at all. We, I tried asking questions. I tried, you know, moving it even to scare my friend and like to see if, oh, wait, it'll start moving, you know, by itself. So I thought the whole point of it was to move by itself, that little disc that you put your fingers on. Um, and sure enough, 
we asked it one more question before we were done playing it, and I said, "Who's really here with us?" And he could, my, he should be here in a bit, guys, just so he could even talk to her after this. But I asked, "Who's here?" And the board said, "Z O Z O Z O." I don't know what that is, but it it literally kept doing that on the board and with our fingers on it, and um, that and just gave me chills. I think yeah. that's the name of a demon or something like that. That was the name of an album a while back, and that's oh my gosh, chills. <laughs> yeah, well, I did that and I played with that, and I decided to do that back when I was fourteen years old. And um, mind you, guys, I I I really do not. Um, one second. Yeah. I just got massive amounts of chills all over when you said that. Yeah. And I know like for Ouija boards. Yeah. 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 And he's in here right now. What's up, bloody beast, man? Yeah. Well, anyways, guys, um, what I was saying was when, when that happened, um, my dad caught me and he like came up and he, he, he gave me a spanking, dude. You know, he caught me playing the Ouija board with my buddy right here. And, um, he spanked me and he's like, don't you ever fucking touch that? Like, you know what that thing does? And like, he was like getting in my face, dude. And then my dad was very strict with me. And, um, you know, he always tried to discipline me the best he could. And, um, yeah, it was just, it was crazy when, when, when that all happened. And, um, two months after that, I was playing basketball. I was in my basketball season. So after November, December, we're in January. Fast forward January from that October. And um, I'm in basketball season with my good buddy here. <laughs> I keep bringing him up. Uh, bloody beast. But yeah, um, this is a very true story, guys. So Heck yeah, me, me, me and this boy have uh, some crazy memories together. All right, go, um, go for it. Yeah, Apologize. Yeah, man. Go ahead. Anyways, man. But um, yeah, so two months after that, I'm in basketball season. January 15th. Yeah, it was January 15th, one, uh, one day after his birthday, actually. And um, it was on a Friday night, and I was watching the uh, Lakers versus Cavaliers game. It was a basketball game, and I was in my bedroom. And um, my father comes into the room. He's like, hey, we're going to go have a barbecue at, at Lisa's house. You're going to come? I was like, ah, my back kind of hurts from basketball practice. So I'm going to stay in. So um, he's like, all right, well, we'll be, we'll be back later or whatever. So I was like, all right, cool. So. I was home alone with my grandpa, my gra- my grandpa, but he had a uh, he had got back from the bar and he was kind of drunk, so he like he was knocked out. He was like knocked out um, down down the hallway, and um, I was there in my room just so sore. I I had basketball practice that day, finished a whole uh, weeks of basketball practice, and um, I just wanted to rest, man, and watch some basketball on TV. So I was resting in my room, and it was around twelve o'clock midnight. I was watching the game. Everything's going good. And then I get that sort of feeling where I'm like so sleepy and I can't help it. I'm like, oh, man, I'm tired. But I'm, I'm kind of like scared. I felt like something was in the room with me or like something, you know, I, my mind was just, ah, I don't know. I was just scared, guys. I had that fear of a young kid. I was even scared to sleep in the dark, man. You know, my parents weren't there either. I just kept thinking of my parents. And uh, I felt like something was just over my shoulder that night, dude. And um, I'm in there and watching the game. Like I said, I'm falling asleep and I'm keeping myself up. And then I finally just end up knocking out. And when I fell asleep, I felt like a, like a tap or something. Like, I don't know what it was, but something in my head just told me, wake up. And I, when I, I woke up, my eyes opened. And I looked around the room, and the TV was on. The basketball game was on. The, the, the game was still on, right? And um, everything in my room looks normal. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'm talking in my head, right? I tried getting up out of my, my bed, and I couldn't. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa wait a minute. What's, what's going on? I couldn't move a muscle, guys. As soon as I felt that I couldn't move nothing, and I... I could only move my eyes. I felt a numbness all around my body. Like I was paralyzed. And all I could see was my vision. Everything was gone but my vision. 
and I'm there in, in bed. I'm looking around. My eyes are going everywhere. I'm like, my lava lamp is on. The TV's still on. Why can't I get up in my bed? Am I having a, like, am I having a seizure? Am I dying right now? My vision was kind of like blurred out. Like it was blurred out first. Like if I just woke up like, you know, tired, tired. And then my eyes started getting clearer as I was like, you know, focusing on things. And then I, I kind of like screamed out for my mom and dad. I was like, dad. But everything sank. Like everything just, everything was mute in that room. Because I couldn't even hear the TV and the TV was on. And um, everything sank when I, when I tried calling out for my mom and dad. And then I look in front of my bed after screaming so much, and there's a, a little small figure, like a, like a leprechaun, I would say, or like a troll. And I could see him with long hair in front of my bed. And I'm, I'm, my vision's getting clear. I could see now how my vision's getting clear now. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? And it's literally peeking out of my bed and going up and laughing at me. I could see its big smile. And I just, I just freaked out, guys. I was like, no. Nah! Like, I was trying to scream and trying to get out as much as I could. And with my eyes open, looking at that thing, and it was just going up. And then once I closed my eyes and I said, God, please, I'm sorry. Please, God. I thought, it, I thought God was going to come to save me. I didn't know who God was at that time. And there was no God to save me, guys. Guess what? As soon as I opened my eyes after saying God, an old lady stood up, a, a lady figure in, in a white dress. And Isaac knows because this is the same story I told him, everything in detail. This lady stands up, her eyeliner smeared all over her eyes, looked like she was crying. As many know, um, La La Rona, that's a, that's a folk tale in, in Mexico, kind of look like that. But, um, like, it was just, it was terrifying. It was an older woman. And while I sat up, while I sat up, right, I'm going to close this window right here because I'm getting kind of scared. I'm next to a lake. <laughs> yeah, this is but, creepy. <laughs> yeah, that's why I got up to close this window. <laughs> I don't want to start hearing crying and stuff. But So how uh, old were you when that happened? About I was 14, so I'm 21 now. So the 14, that's when you were using the Ouija board, right? Yeah, that was three And then that's when you saw the one. Oh, creepy. Yeah, and... um. I'm seeing these figures in my room. Like, they look like holograms. Like, this is how real they looked. And, um, and I'm freaking out big time. I, I tried everything. I just look at that lady, and she was laughing at me, too. Like, laughing the way that that little troll was laughing at me. And um, I just remember staring at it in his face. And I closed my eyes again. And I just, I, I, I really, I really knew, I, I said in my head, I'm going to die. I said, say goodbye, Seth, it's over. Like, this person's here to take me. Whatever this is, it's here to take me. And um, sure enough, when I closed my eyes, I remembered something that my aunt told me, my mom's sister. She said, whenever you're in trouble, you need to call upon the name of Jesus. And I know it sounds kind of cringe to some of you atheists in here, but that's literally the first thing that came to my head when I said, I'm going to die right now. So I said, Jesus Christ, wherever you are, please come and save me. I really, really do not want to die right now. That's literally what I said in my head, guys. And sure enough, once I said those magic words, my arms were free, my legs were free, and my soul was free. I sat up, and that thing right in front of me, literally just, just like, it, it like when, I, when I woke up fully and I sat up, it just like blew right into the fucking like debris of the light in my room. Like it just disappeared. Like, and you could see it go into the light. It was just really weird. And I sat up and I felt a feeling of peace and love showered all over that room that I was in, dude. And I just, I couldn't, I couldn't be scared. I wasn't, I wasn't scared of what just happened. I was like, oh, my God, like I, something just saved me. And, and I think it was God. I think it was Jesus because that's the only name I said. And uh, I go to my father's room, and it was 1 in the morning. So it was about an hour into sleep paralysis. 
you look into the studies, the paralysis lasts only 15 minutes to about 20 minutes for most people. So this felt a very long time and it was actually an hour in. So. Wow. Yeah, it was very <laughs> weird. Holy moly. So yeah. have you found that um, these experiences have brought you closer to Jesus? Like, do you think that your faith has gotten stronger? Because you were saying that when you were younger, you didn't really believe too much. But has this now proven? Well, it you? wasn't just because of that, Kashika. Even though I caught Jesus, I was very ignorant of my style. Um, so the very, uh, that very night I woke up, um, like I said, I felt a feeling of peace lingering in the room. But as I walked out of my room, I felt fear again because I went to my father's room. And I went to my dad and I woke him up and I said, dad, 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 I'm, I'm in, I'm like, I'm in, I'm in shock. Like I, I just, I, Jesus just saved me. He said, what? He gets up. He's like, whoa, whoa, what the fuck are you talking about? I said, dad, like he thought I was going crazy. I felt like he had a feeling that I was through psychosis moment or something, but he got up so fast. Like he just like, like, I don't know. He looked scared. Like he looked really scared when I said, Jesus saved me. And he, I, I explained to him everything that happened and he ended up sleeping with me in my, in my room that night. And um, the very next night, I had so much fear. I did not want to sleep in my room. Yeah. I, wanted, I wanted to sleep in my best friend Josh's house. A very good friend of mine from middle school and elementary. We kind of drifted off. But uh, shout out Josh, um, Mr. Big Josh, um, if you're seeing this video. Love you, bro. But uh, I ended up going to his house. And we, um, we were watching a UFC fight. And uh, my, my dad had dropped me off that night. And my last words to him were, were I love you. And... Um, I remember that night was just so fast. I don't really remember what happened um, with the fight. I don't even know who really won that fight, but uh, it just, I just remember going to sleep on the couch that night and I woke up because, and I, really, I literally woke up around the same time I had sleep paralysis the night before. It was about one in the morning and I woke up, my friend Josh wasn't in there. He wasn't, he wasn't in the living room. I'm like, where the fuck is this guy? And I go and he's asleep with his brother and I was like, oh, what the fuck? Like he went with his brother. So I go back to the living room and I looked at my phone, and my phone was on silent, and I had 24 missed calls. Huh. 24, yeah, from my mom. I'm like, what the hell? And she calls right, right away when I look at my phone. I'm like, hello? And she's like, Seth. And I'm like, what's up, mom? She's like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, mijo. Your dad's not going to make it. And I'm like, what? Like, what are you talking about? She's like in shock. Like, she couldn't even talk to me. She, she told me, she was like, please stay where you are josh is we're gonna come and get you so i just remember shaking and i'm like what's happening what's happening and um I remember getting into the car that night and being rushed to the hospital to go see my dad and he was there and i swear to god the very the very first thing when i saw him with all those tubes in him and stuff when i walked in i <clears throat> i saw a big tear go down his eye and um i was very upset I was very upset that he passed away because I didn't know how to be a man yet. I wasn't, I didn't feel like I was fully disciplined yet to go on alone without him because he held us down so much, you know, guys, I've seen so much as a young kid and um, I, I, I really needed a fa father figure in my life, you know, and, uh, you know, seeing, seeing him gone and what happened the night before was just a tragedy for me. So I didn't, I, I, I continue not to believe in God. And a matter of fact, that is at his rosary, I was punching the walls in the bathroom um, because I was so mad. I said, why, why does life have to be this way? It's not fair. You know, I was just so traumatized through that whole experience. You know, I just couldn't, couldn't fathom seeing him in a box because that's where he, he is now. You know, he's, he's in a box. And that's just this reality, though. Now, that, that was the old me. Now I actually look at death as as a great thing and I, i've come to god uh, i've come to peace with it because i've lost an uncle i've lost an aunt and i've lost my father and i've lost my grandparent i have one more grandparent and i grew up with him my whole life and if he passes away i'm at peace with it my mom passes away i'm at peace with it you know i will speak at the rosaries i will stand up i will tear up but i, I will hold my my my, my help myself up high and i won't go to no other resort because I've come to peace with it, that they're going to peace with God, you know? Um, like oh. I said, right? yeah, go, go ahead, go ahead. Well, sorry for your loss. Yeah, yeah, no, but yeah, I just wanted to
that um do you think that I, he's um helping you from the other side like uh i know you you were talking about having to deal with different experiences like that uh i don't know if you've ever looked into what that z o z o means or z o z o right I have, um I, I have it's it's a very demonic entity that a lot of people witness in uh, on 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 the Ouija board, when they experience the Ouija board, they always go past that certain demon. Um, it's just, it's, it's, I don't know why I decided to even touch the Ouija board that night with Isaac. Did we touch the Ouija board that night and around Halloween time that, that three months prior? You said what? Remember when we played Ouija, the Ouija board that one time? Yeah. You see, guys? Yeah, that's uh, why I think. That was a fucking mistake. Did you deal deal with anything because of it? No, I mean I've I've always dealt with stuff all, my whole life, but I've always been a big believer in Christ. I've I've gone through so much shit as a little kid, but I mean, I I've always I mean my mind has always been the strongest part of of me. Like I've always been, I always like to think I'm I'm the most mentally tough person in the room. So I've always had faith in Jesus Christ. Like no no matter what He put me through. I've always had faith in him. Even when even when Seth stopped believing in him, I tried persuading him way. I guess you could say persuading him way back to the light. But I told him like, I, I'm not I'm not God. I'm no, I'm no one to judge. If if you want to think like that, do it. But I'm I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. And I I thank God that he came back to Jesus Seth because Seth is is an amazing person, notorious. He's an He's an awesome, awesome human being. My brother right there. Yeah, guys, we go way back, man. And we've also had um, a paranormal uh, activity experience one time. Remember that, Isaac, when we were at, uh, at the beach, dude? And we decided to leave yeah. that night? Cause we, yeah, we, that was... we, we were in some legal trouble, guys. <laughs> hey, we were, some, <laughs> we were in some legal trouble. You know what I'm talking about, right, Isaac? <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> Yeah, so... We so decided... what happened? I mean, with the, okay, the yeah. paranormal activity. <laughs> oh, this is this is some paranormal shit that we went through. We were actually... Some very creepy shit that happened that night. Very drunk. Oh, roboting. Like, it was... So, hello? Yeah, I repeat, that, you repeat that again. You kind of broke up. Yeah, he was. Can you hear us? Can you hear us, Notorious? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, are you, can you guys hear me? Yeah, you're roboting a tiny bit, but uh, continue. Yeah, you might, you might want to go back to where you were at. I don't know if you moved or something because you, you lost signal a little bit. Yeah, I did move. Let me go over here in a second. Yeah, because I really want to hear about that story, the new one about the paranormal activity that was happening with the two of you when you were drinking a little bit. <laughs> After dealing with whatever it was that you were dealing with. <laughs> yeah. Hello, yeah. Guys. Hey. Yeah, we can hear you, bro. All right. So me and this guy got some got in some legal trouble, of course, on the internet. And we are freshmen around this time. And um we are getting very drunk off some Dos Equis. <laughs> and um Those are we, good. We, yeah, and we were there, right? And um I'm like, Isaac, let's go on a fucking adventure tonight. Like, let, you know what? Let's fucking leave this place and let's see where the beach takes us. We were on a beach trip in uh, South Padre Island, Texas. Very beautiful beach. Um, one of the South best Texas. in my opinion. I don't know if, I don't know if y'all know about that, but if y'all ever get a chance, y'all should visit South Padre Island, Texas. It's a very beautiful beach. Yes, very beautiful beach, guys. And it's good to get toasty out there, too, in that awesome sun. But, um, yeah, like, I was saying we're going down the beach. Um, it's nighttime. It's about what three in the morning this time. I, I it was late. It was late. It was at night, and um, we're walking. We're drinking beers or whatever, and uh, we're just we're just seeing where the fucking where we're gonna get taken, right? So we're looking at all these hotels in back of the beach, and we're looking at them. We're like, dude, like we should find a party. Like there's probably a house party going down right now because it was during spring break, and. Sure enough, we hear loud music at this pool. We're like, oh, shit, let's go over there, bro. Like, there, there's probably some, you know, bitches out there. And, you know, let's, let's go see if there's, there's some hot girls. You know, we're freshmen, guys. We're freshmen in high school, dude. So um, 
we jump these fences, we get into the hotel, and this is the right one. We 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 could hear the music playing from um the second floor where the pool was. There was a pool on top of that building. So, anyways, guys, once we get to the stairs, right, we could see that clearly there was only three stairs, three stairs from the outside. And when we when we go into that, we start going onto the stairs, right? We run down this hallway, we go down the stairs, and um I started going, dude. Boom, 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 boom. Me and Isaac are going up. And we're like, wait a minute, like this isn't three stairs. Like, why is it why does it keep going? Really weird. I swear to God. Like I thought it was tripping. And Guys, it felt like we were going up flights of stairs. Like if we were freaking climbing, I don't know, like it like was hours weird. Yes. And we knew we were on the right stairs, guys. And I'm like, Isaac, where the fuck are we going, bro? And he's like, just keep going, keep going, keep going. And and he's like, and I'm like, dude, nah, this is weird, bro. Like, why is like why haven't the stairs stopped? And sure enough, dude, <laughs> we reached the highest, like the middle part, and we're like, dude, wait, is that the pool? We look at the pool, guys, and there's literally nobody, and the pool is green. Liter larva green. And the pool is like nothing like we like there was literally lights and people you could hear people from up there, dude. And it was just so weird. And I'm like, Isaac, oh, my God, there's nobody up here, bro. Like, everything's dark. And we were like, oh, my God, this is a fucking abandoned hotel from years ago, dude. Oh, my God, guys. We start freaking out. I'm like, let's go through the elevator. Isaac's like, no. He's waiting for me at the stairs. He's like, Seth, come down the stairs. I was kind of chubby at the time. I'm like, nah, bro, I'm going to the fucking elevator. Like, Fuck that, dude. And I start going through the elevator, bro. And this guy, Isaac, starts running towards me. Guess what, guys? Once I'm going into the elevator, I'm holding it open for him, and the elevator literally squashes my arm, dude. Like, it, like, literally kept me into the elevator. And then this guy, I was like, oh, is it going me? And, dude, he pulls the fucking elevator doors, and we go <laughs> We had to ass. fly the elevator door open just so he could get out. Yeah. And he was, dude, like, we just ran, guys. We ran down. And literally, when we were down the flight of stairs, guys, it felt like four stairs. It was, like, so short. Right Isaac, right when we went down, dude, it was like not even long. Like we thought, like yeah, go, going good. down that, like that, was, that was actually like three or four flights. But going up, like it, it felt like we were at least climbing stairs. Seven feet least, in, yeah. I felt like we were seven stairs in, bro. Like it was really weird. And um, right after that, guys, I, I kid you not. Right when we get downstairs, we jump the fucking fences, and um, there's no cars in the tunnel, for the tunnel way that we were in. But, um, yeah, we, we ended up getting out of there, and guess what? We saw a – it was during spring break, and usually all the colleges, they go around. And this was, like, the first annual year that they did it, but they were giving out free rides in a, in a white van. And, yeah, it sounds weird, but it was Christian schools, dude. And we were It was a the, church who was offering it was a church. Uh, it was free, a church. Right free rides to two drunk spring break college kids and free yeah. pancakes for <laughs> drunk pancakes, spring break. Yep. And they just so happened to be driving by as we were leaving that haunted hotel, and they picked us up, and they and they, they were so us. they prayed for us, and they were so awesome people. Like they were telling us about you know about God's word, and like we were we were freshmen, we were still little boys, like like learning about this stuff. And these were these were college kids too, doing this out of the kindness of their heart, like. No one had them. No one was forcing them to do it. It was they were doing it at, at their spring break time, and they, they were angels, just, guys. Like I, they literally, like, they, they were, were literally crazy. angels. Yeah, <laughs> it was so weird. And me and this lucky like, you. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> very lucky. <laughs> okay, yeah. so tell me about experiences that you had with aliens. Um, I'm not sure if you were there, Isaac, but this was uh, Memo's house, dude. Oh um, yeah, I remember that. I didn't. I didn't. I was there, <laughs> but I didn't witness it. You didn't yeah. witness it. You're probably inside, huh? Yeah. I don't even remember. I was really drunk that day too. But um, yeah, guys. So this is about my freshman year, and uh, me and my friends, we were outside playing beer pong, and um, you know, we were shooting guns. We were shooting guns into the sky. We were out in the ranch and um, in the deep branches of South Texas, and uh, we we were literally yeah. My friend lived behind a shooting range. And they had clay there, like, where we could shoot clay. So we're like, hey, yeah, let's get some fucking clay. Like, we'll, we'll, we'll steal some. And my friend was like, nah, dude. Like, the owner of the house, he was like, dude, I'm telling you, bro. Like, like I'm telling you, like, I feel like they're going to catch us. Dog. If we go there and, like, try to get the clays, like, I feel like they have alarms or something. 
I'm like, nah, dude, chill. Like, we're good. We're good. And I remember I was the first one to climb the fence. It was a small fence. We climbed it. And it was me, my friend Alexis, Carlos, and um, who else was there? Um, Memo. Mem- Memo was there. And we climbed the fence. We were all there. And um, we got the clays. We got about 60, 70 clays to shoot. And when we got them, we were climbing the fence. We threw the bag over full of clays. When we tried climbing that fence, guys, I kid you not, right when I, right when I was climbing up to crawl the fence, a huge, huge light from the sky, like really, really bright, like green, green, bluish light shines down on us only. And we're like, what the fuck is that? And it blinked for like three seconds, disappeared. We we're like, what the fuck was that? And we all look at each other like, oh my God, that was a fucking UFO, dude. Like, we were like, what the fuck? And, and my other friend was like, what did you guys see? Like, he was on the other side of the fence. We're like, you didn't see that? He's like, nah, bro, why did y'all freeze? Like, what, what were y'all looking at? Like, there's nothing in the sky. What do you mean you didn't see nothing? Like, we were just so baffled that night. And I guarantee, I, 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 I'm telling you, I've had a crazy life, guys, already. But this was this takes like the it. cake. <laughs> this takes the fucking cake, man. And uh, true stories. I mean, this is stuff that I can bring other people on. And, you know, yeah. they'll tell you. Yeah. And you two are funny, too. Bloody beast and you. <laughs> you can tell you're very good friends, right? Obviously, you've, you've dealt with Since quite a Since sixth grade, before. man. Since sixth grade, yeah. <laughs> the way that you two were talking was amazing. Um, how about astral projections? What, do you, what have you experienced with that? Well, uh, yeah. So the Sounds astral- like you can keep talking all night long, too, about this whole thing. You've got so many stories, <laughs> right? No, thank you so much, Mishaka. You've been a great interviewer. But, um, yeah, um, the astral world, like I said, I feel like when I went through that um, sleep paralysis episode, I'm getting into contact with interdimensional beings, which are demons or quote unquote aliens, what people like to call them other life forms, right? And uh, whatever they are, I believe in that they they are demons, but they are in a different realm, of course. We are in our own realm and somehow they just get in here. They just, I don't know, they come out whenever they want, you know, they... Some say they pray on the weak. Some say they pray on the strong, you know. And at that time, I was very much weak. And um, I did think that, I, you know, the astral projection theory, I, I really wanted to ask other people, but I'm talking about the astral realm right now. Astral realm is very real because I've seen it through sleep paralysis and lucid dreaming. But has anybody in here been through a, a astral projection episode or knows anything about it? Yeah, my, my wife has actually uh, experienced a sleep paralysis as well. Oh, wow, bro. Um, when was that? This was actually... Like, a year ago. But, yeah. like, I've been getting, like... Last like... summer, right? Yeah. She she had a very bad experience with the sleep paralysis. She actually, uh, during her episode of sleep paralysis, she saw the, the Santa Morte. I don't know if y'all know that, but um, it's basically... Mm. And, uh, the one with the family. It's it's basically like uh, the Grim Reaper. Yeah, and a lot a lot of Mexican gangs like the Sinaloa cartel. And... It's basically yeah. It's it's a very it's a very uh uh, uh I guess you could it's say a demon. powerful demon. Yeah, and um, a lot of uh, drug dealers and a lot of uh, mm-hmm. people who uh, do uh, to do harm others they pray to that and they uh, ask ask that for uh, protection. Just like Bujeria. Yeah, it's I, you could say it's kind of like rich witchcraft as well. Yeah. So, believing in Jesus helps to protect Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, you. She. The same. The same thing happened. A notorious. She. She said Jesus Christ. She said Jesus Christ's name. And when she said that, it, it stopped. Like she was able to move again. I was crying. And she was crying her eyes out. Like she. She had ran to her mom's room and like. Her mom was telling her, like, no, it's going to be okay. But she, she was just crying and crying. But Did you see anything? Yes, I saw her. She like, saw the she Santa Muerte. She didn't say anything to me. Like, literally, I was asleep. I used, like, I have my room for myself. Well, my sister left, so the room is for me. 
So literally I was asleep and then I just start feeling like, um, oh, I remember that I saw my brother. Like my brother, my brother is so dumb. So I was like so mad that he always get my things. So <laughs> I was like, really, Alan? Like really you're in my room right now? And then I just remember he just laughed and then he left. And then I was like, I have this weird guy. And then uh, in the door, like when the he opened the door like he he wasn't there i just saw him but he wasn't there he was asleep and and then i just saw the santa and then um she was just like looking at me like i just saw her her little like little freaking big ass her pole with the, yeah. with the with the knife at the end yes and and she didn't say anything to me she was just in the fr in front of me and i literally i'm just like i'm scared because like i don't believe in that i believe in god like hundred percent since ever and i was i started praying i was like please like i don't even know what i haven't done wrong like please don't don't let me here don't be like please help me and then i started praying all the time like i was padre nuestro like i was all the time and then um I, until i i finished doing the prayer like everything disappeared and i went back to normal now of course i went crying with my mom and i was like mom i don't know what's happening and then she was she was like everything is fine mommy like don't worry and it's horrible like because you can't move the only thing i was screaming i was like uh like get get out of me like stay away from me like i don't want you here like stay away but she was like she was just staying staring at me i just saw her face on the little palo and i was like so 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 scared but yeah yes, that's scary yeah. that's yeah. very scary and it's a good thing that you do have your faith, right? To to yes, stop it. Yeah, and after it's still appearing, but um, they were like taking my brother and my sister. Like she was taking my brother and my sister, and I I was reading because I'm, whenever something happens to me, I start like googling it, and I start like what why is like what does that mean? And then they were like, if you say like bad stuff to that person, like to the demon or whatever, like. They just like disappear. So I was just like, okay, fuck you. Leave my brother and my sister alone. <laughs> I was like, just like, uh, God, uh, don't be like that. Don't don't let them take them. And then I was just like, I just saw her and then I was like, fuck you, like fuck. And I was telling her like bad stuff. And I was like, I'm not scared of you, but if I'm scared of you, like take me instead of them. And yeah, she just like disappeared, but it wasn't that bad as the first time that I saw her. And and yeah, like it doesn't happen like normally. Like and whenever it happens, it just I I can move, but I don't see anything anymore. Thank God. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's good. Thank you for sharing your experience with us. That was great. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's so weird because I swear to God, I I don't know, swear to God, but I swear too that um what, now that I do have sleep paralysis, I actually forget that I'm in sleep paralysis because. I just open my eyes and like I, if I can't move, I'm like, all right, yeah, I need to go back to sleep. Like I, I just yeah, unless I really need something, you know. And I just go back. Maybe I had a sleep paralysis. <laughs> yeah, there's the same thing with her. Like if she has it, she'll just wake up, but she'll be like very calm and she'll tell me like, "Baby, I just had a sleep paralysis," and then I'll just you know reassure her that everything's okay, and then she'll just go back to sleep like normally. Yeah, I mind you. This was actually um, found out. I think if you guys want to look that up in the night in the nineteenth century, people started seeing the old hag, which I saw, which is the old lady. And there's also the shadow man and the little girl. The little girl will sit on your chest, and she will be on your face. Never had that experience, but I have had my friend uh, Kochi. Um, his name is George. He um, he was doubting me actually, guys. Mm -hmm. um, he was two weeks after. You know, he was like, did that really happen? Bro? Mm -hmm. Like, he was like, hello? Hello? Hello. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah we can still friend, hear you. My friend George was telling me, he was like, did that really happen, bro? Or like, are you bullshitting? Like, what do you mean? Like, are you serious? You think I'm bullshitting, bro? He's like, no, no, like, I don't, I don't think you're bullshitting. But, you know, it's just odd that, you know, you saw those things. Like, you really, you really couldn't move when you called upon me. I said, yeah, dude. He's like, well, I yeah, can't. I've been trying to figure out why it is that you've seen so many things where most or a big chunk of people don't actually see any of those, but you've dealt with demons, you've dealt with, I don't know, the, what those I've other only things. I've dealt once with, with, with what I've seen was a UFO, 
but I couldn't see if it was a UFO or not. It was a huge light that just beamed on us. Like there was no helicopter, no plane in the sky. There was no like, clouds. No sound. No sound. No, no sound. Just the light. My friend said he couldn't even see the light. My friend Carlos, he was outside the, uh, the other side of the fence, and he said he didn't see no fucking light. What are y'all talking about? I said, bro, that's the scariest thing that's ever happened to me. But besides, <laughs> yeah, but besides all that, um. You've had a lot of scary things happen. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> I've had but, goosebumps but, but, already on how many but, but, times. Let me, but let me tell you, though. Let me tell you, though, real quick. My friend George, um, Isaac knows who George is, too. Uh, we are way back from eighth, uh, from seventh grade. George, George is from seventh grade. And I'll bring him in here um, sometime next week. But he actually had his own experience um, two weeks after my, my father's passing. Uh, he ended up calling me one night. And he was like, sad, sad. I need to talk to you right now. I was like, what, what is it, bro? He's like, dude, I don't know what you did to me or what you brought upon me. But like, I swear to God, bro, I was asleep in my living room. And when I was sleeping, I saw like, I woke up and I saw that there was a man in back of my couch with red eyes and he was bald. And he said that it looked like Voldemort from a, uh, from Harry Potter. <laughs> and I was like, what? Like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, I couldn't move. I couldn't speak. And he was trying to scream for his dad and he couldn't let his voice sank. And I was like, what the fuck is going on, dude? Like, do I have something on me? Like, I don't know what it is, but my friend did experience that and he could even tell you for himself. I'm not sure if you know that, Isaac, but um, yeah. Well, this dude. is why I was asking you earlier. If you thought maybe your father was trying to communicate with you, after he passed because you were experiencing those things after he passed. But at the same time, you also experienced some of those things after using that Ouija board, right? Yes, yes, yes. And Did you ever do of... anything to close it off or to, to get them out or whatever? Isaac, we didn't even close it, right? We didn't even say goodbye. We just closed the board. Oh. Yeah, we didn't. Um... Well, I don't even think we were aware that you had to say goodbye at, at the time. I think we found out after that. Uh, you're supposed to say goodbye, but yeah, we 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 were just. But I we, claim to the to the tongue of God that it's goodbye now. You know, I claim that I I, I have a claim that Jesus is is known that that is gone from my life now. You know, because without God, I mean, I really I'm really I'm nothing. You know, I I, I think I I could have died that night too if I hadn't called upon His name. But um, you know. Wow. <laughs> You know, I think this is a really good time to open it up to the audience to see if anyone has any questions because you guys have you you basically there's been a lot to discuss, and I'm really glad that you've shared those those stories. And it sounds like you probably have a lot more stories too. Oh yeah, I, I, I would love to hear uh, anybody else's stories that you know that might have experienced anything even related to. Oh, uh, what what me and the tourists have gone through because we do have many stories. Oh. We could we could talk all night. <laughs> I do too. Well, before I say anything, does anyone else have anything that they'd like to add? Maybe an experience that's similar, or a question for Notorious, or or a bloody beast. I know I was full of goosebumps myself. But I've experienced something similar, and it was after using a Ouija board. My cousin came over, a couple of my cousins came over, and I was maybe about 16, 17, maybe 15. Same thing, you know, I didn't know this thing about this Ouija board, but they brought it, they played with it, they didn't do whatever you're supposed to do with it. It was just, you know, their kids using a game without really knowing. And for years afterwards, I would be pulled off the end of my bed by my feet, um, you know, basically I experienced a lot of just really weird things. <laughs> I called in my nightly visitor eventually. And then one year later, like I said, one year, day, years later, um, my cousins came over and I told them the story and they said, oh, you didn't tell us that. So they ran upstairs and they prayed in my room. And after they prayed in my room, it was gone. That's what I found out. That thing's never coming into my home again. <laughs> Keep that Ouija board away. I'm not interested. Yeah. No, you don't mess around with stuff like that, right? Yeah, you don't you don't play with, with anything close to that. That's just like you're inviting uh, demonic entities in, into your life. And I know you don't want that. I, I sure as hell don't want that. No, not at all. Nobody wants that. <laughs> exactly. 
Well, Notorious, thank you. Thank you very much for, for sharing everything with us. My brain feels like it's maybe a little too overload right now with the creepy, you know, goosebumps. <laughs> Do you have any final messages that you'd like <laughs> to leave with us? So any final thoughts? No, guys, I want to thank everybody for coming in here during my podcast. Great to be back. Year 2021 has been amazing. Um, the round table is growing. Um, you know, as, as y'all, many of y'all know, it's a great family community, great family vibe. And whoever has their stories to share, um, y'all can go ahead and share at, at any time you want. Um, we are doing daily podcasts during the week or even on the weekends. Just shoot Kashika a text or shoot me a text or Mr. Sign in here. And uh, we'll go ahead and set you all up. But um, yeah, that's thank all you. I to okay, perfect. That was great. Very interesting. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> like I said, I've, I've spent quite a bit of time with the goosebumps on myself. And <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you to everyone attending. Thank you very much to uh, Notorious's friend, Bloody Beast, and to his wife or girlfriend. Thank you for your story as well. Um, thank you to everyone that did participate. Uh, again, we are the Roundtable Discord server. And just a reminder, you can find uh, this and other, all of our over 250 episodes, the Roundtable podcasts on BitChute, Podbean, YouTube, and Twitch. Also, join us on uh, Roundtable Discord server. You can just Google Discord Roundtable Discord. Also, one more thing, guys. Doge to the moon, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's go! <laughs> <laughs> thank you everyone uh, thank all y'all for hearing me this was very therapeutic for me and my wife oh nice uh, good I, yeah I, I like talking to y'all just like i said it's, i sense a, a great great vibrations going through this chat and um thanks for just uh hearing our stories and uh god bless y'all and uh Same to you. yeah thank you yeah thank you Ainsoft. thank you root server or root user for uh recording and uploading now let's all jump up to the round table one where we can continue to discuss this and other important topics as well. And thank you everyone. God bless. Bloody beast out. <laughs>